Hello everybody, this is Tom Seidner and today in this video we are going to do another slot car project similar to some of the other stuff we've done like chipping the lanes and the analog to digital box and the uh, sensors for your lap counter and everything but this is a simple one so prior to this we've done some pretty complicated electronic stuff but I wanted to do a video of something that you could do with your child or grandchild if um, you guys are into slot cars together. So today we're going to create a ghost car for an analog track. Now as you guys know from one of my videos, I started out with the Carrera Go. Uh, I played with that for a while before I moved up to the Digital 132. And when I had my Carrera Go, one of the things that I really wanted to be able to do was have a ghost car that I could race against. And uh, they actually made a Carrera Go uh, module that hooked onto it that would allow you to do a ghost car but that thing's been discontinued or it's unavailable at least in the United States it's unavailable so I wanted a simple way to actually be able to run a ghost car on my track um, so what I did was I ended up making a little ghost car controller and this is a project that any of you guys can do and I'm going to go over how I did it it's very simple and this is something you could do with um, you know a child or a grandchild or something if you have somebody who you like to race slot cars with you can teach them a little bit of electronics and um, you could do this project together so let me show you how it works it's very simple it's just got a simple potentiometer here that controls the flow of electricity to the track and you can just turn this knob and when you turn the knob the car will start running and you can adjust the knob to whatever speed you'd like the ghost car to go and then the ghost car will run around the track. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at how I made this. So the first thing I did was I went out to eBay and I bought a couple old controllers. Uh, they don't have to be newer controllers. They can even be broken controllers. As long as the connector end, this end here, as long as that's not broken, then it's, it's fair game to use. So I bought some of these, and then what I did was I opened up, there's a couple screws in here. I opened up the screws from this controller, and all I did was I took a soldering iron and I unsoldered the wires from the controller. So the next thing I did was I got my voltmeter and I wanted to see how much ohms of resistance this controller had. Now the controller is going to have the most resistance when it's up, resisting the car moving around the track, and then it's going to have the least amount of resistance when it's pressed down. Um, now I'm pretty sure this doesn't go down to zero, but with these controllers with the turbo button on them, they will actually go to zero when you press the button the boost button which will drop the resistance to zero so but I want to know what the resistance is when this thing is in its full top location so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my voltmeter just a simple voltmeter as long as it has ohms on it and I'm going to set it to 20,000 ohms and when you set it there you should get one because we don't have any um, connection between the two and then what you're going to do is you're going to take that those leads and you're going to put them on the little copper connectors that are inside this controller end. And when you do, you are going to get a resistance value that this controller is putting out. Now I can see my um, meter and right now and it says 9.65. So that's 9.65K, so that's roughly 10K. Now as you can see, I'm getting 9.65K on this controller. You can also see that when I push the controller down, it's going to drop the resistance. Drops it down to what looks like 4.06. See, it doesn't go completely to zero. So it goes from 10K to about 4K. Now, if I push this turbo button, you're going to notice that it drops down to zero because that turbo button actually eliminates any resistance whatsoever. Okay. So that's kind of what we want to mimic. We want to mimic the ability to set this at some range between 10K and zero. So the next thing you're going to need to do this project is you're going to need some potentiometers. Now when you buy potentiometers, you can buy them in specific values or like I did, I bought a range of potentiometers 
and the range of these potentiometers is from um, 5k all the way up to 100k so I got a 5k 10k 20k 50k and 100k potentiometers in this pack and I do a lot of different electronics projects and I thought I might need some different ones but if you're just doing this you only need that 10k as we saw from what the resistance of that plunger was so what you're going to do is you're going to select a 10k potentiometer from the uh, pack and you, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up soldering the wires from the other end of this, the end that you unsoldered from the plunger, you're going to solder it to one of the connectors on this potentiometer. I'm going to give you a close up view of this potentiometer so you can kind of see what it looks like. You can see it has three leads on it. You're only going to be concerned with two of those leads. Um, one of the sides of the leads goes from open the left to the right and the other goes from right to left so depending on which way you want to turn the knob to make the car go faster or slower then you're going to choose those correct leads now here I like to have the the knob all the way to the left when it's off and then all the way to the right when it's on so if you wire yours up like I wired mine up that's what you're going to get it's going to be car stopped which would be full resistance, car full speed to the right, um, no, no resistance. Now, like I said, you can actually wire it either way. If you wire it the other way, you'll have uh, to the full to the right, you'll have uh, full resistance, and then full to the left, no resistance. And you can actually use your meter to test this. You can figure out which side of these leads is going to be full to the left, or full to the right. Now the middle one is always going to be your common which is going to be the one that you're always going to use. So you're always going to use the middle and you're going to either use the post on the left or the post on the right. One other thing that I'd like to note if you can see on this potentiometer right here it is marked 10k up there at the top so you can tell how much k resistance it has. So as you can see here I've got this um, wired up to the middle and the uh, what would be if you're looking at it, the right post on this potentiometer and you can see that I've got it turned all the way to the right and I've got full resistance and if I turn it this way if I turn it back all the way to the left I'm having no resistance and that's actually the opposite of what I want to run mine at so now I'm going to switch to the far uh, left post if you're looking at it straight at it and now I have it turned all the way to the uh, what would be counterclockwise to the left and I've got full resistance which would mean the car would not be moving and then I turn it clockwise to the right and now I have no resistance when it full turned which means the car would be going at full speed around a track and that's kind of the way I want the knob to go so you can kind of uh, experiment around with that decide which way you want the knob to go for car not moving which would be here the higher the resistance, the slower the car is going to go, and then zero would be the fastest the car can go. That's just flat out. So you can adjust the, um, you can, uh, you can test around with this and see which way you want the knob to turn for you. Just remember that you're always going to use the middle, you're always going to use the middle one, and you're going to pick the left or the right, depending on which way you want the knob to move. So once you've got it figured out which way you want to wire up your potentiometer, then you're going to need to find something to put this in. Now, these potentiometers usually come with some uh, nuts, barrel nuts that go on here like this. And you can just drill a hole that's just a little bigger than this shaft. And you can stick that up through there and then put a nut on there and that will hold that in place. And you can put this in anything you want. What I ended up using was I ended up using uh, a container for these grinds. I, uh, I like these grinds. They're not tobacco. They are coffee. They are coffee only, but I like them because they help to give me a little caffeine in the morning and wake me up. And so I have a bunch of these empty containers floating around. Uh, the one nice thing about these is they have a little top in them that comes off, which gives you a nice little um, indented area there. And they also open up very easily, so you can get inside of them quite easily. So what I ended up doing is I ended up taking one of these grinds containers and another nice thing is it's got a little um, thing right there in the center of it, a little bump 
and I ended up drilling out the center of this container with just a hole that was just big enough for the potentiometer to go through the hole and then I stuck the potentiometer through the hole and then I put the um, nut on there to hold it then once I did that uh, this these things usually come with some kind of a knob so I just pressed my knob onto the top of it it was sticking up through the top like this and then I just pressed the knob onto the top of it like that to give it a really nice finished look and then I had something like this and on the inside I just drilled a hole in the side of the bottom part and ran my wire through there on the inside I tied a big knot in the wire just for stress relief so that it wouldn't pull out if my grandson was pulling on it it won't pull out of there and then I all I did was I soldered the two wires from the controller onto the potentiometer and there's a real good close-up view of the wires soldered onto the potentiometer you can see that I only used the center post and either the left or the right post for that and then here's a close-up view of the inside with the knot in there and you can see that it just goes together real easily just like that and you have a nice little um, controller thing that you can sit on the table and it won't move around on you once you have your controller made then it's just as simple as plugging it into the control box of the um, analog track that you're using and then you just adjust your knob to make your car go and the nice thing is you can adjust your knob to make it go faster or slower so what I usually try to do is I adjust it out so that the car doesn't fly off the track and then I let my grandson race around or let him pretend like the cops are chasing him or something and he has a real good time with that so, and you can get the car going pretty fast because this goes down to absolute zero um, the car will go really fast and it will fly off the track Now, the next question you're probably asking yourself is, that's fine for Carrera Go, but what about Carrera Evolution? Well, the same principle will work on Carrera Evolution. In fact, the connectors for uh, the newer versions of Go and the newer versions of Evolution are exactly the same. So you can use this on an Evolution track. So unfortunately, I do not have enough room to make an Evolution track and set it up completely, but I do have the control unit for uh, Carrera Evolution. I have it plugged into power. I have an analog Carrera car on here and I'm using the same exact controller that I used in the Go. Uh, I'm using the same plug because it's the same plug. Now if you've got an older version of Evolution I think they have a different plug. Uh, you could still make one for one of those. You just have to use the plug for that version of the track. But the newer Evolution tracks have the same plug as the Go track and as you can see, I can go ahead and turn this potentiometer. You can see the lights start flashing on the car. And if I turn it a little more, the car will actually drive on the track. And I can't, you know, ramp it up, but it'll go fairly fast. I mean, it'll go just as fast as the car will go with the controller. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, that was hopefully just a little fun electronics project that you can do. Something simple that anybody would do. I would say this is probably a level one electronics project. Uh, the digital to analog conversion box I would probably put at a level 11. But this is something that anybody can do. Have a lot of fun doing it. You can do it with a child. If you've got somebody in your life who you like to tinker around with and, and teach things about electricity and resistance and ohms and how electricity go flows through the cars and stuff, it's a really good teaching tool. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this. As always, if you guys have any questions about this project, please feel free to put it in the comments below. Uh, there are no dumb questions because if you're wondering about this, somebody else inevitably is also wondering about it too. So put it down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this on electronic projects, I like to tinker around with electronics projects and I especially like to do them with the uh, slot cars. So if you like that kind of thing, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can see all my videos on things like this. And I hope you enjoyed this. And until I see you guys again, Happy racing.